Alrighty, so let's do a virtual tour of the Smithsonian's National Postal Museum. I just became aware of this the other day. Um, they have this virtual tour you can take online. And uh, so you, you just click the link right here, it'll take you to the tour. Now, um, I was dilly-dallying in here a little bit, and I haven't checked the whole place out yet, but I did learn that they have three floors, first, second, and third. The third isn't really much, it's a little hangout, kind of mezzanine. Um, but I, I think that this is where you would come in. I could be wrong, <laughs> but anyways, we're on the first floor, and uh, so we get to take a look at this place. And um, they they have cool quotes on the wall, which um, I do like. They have uh, little exhibits littered all throughout this entire museum, of course. This one here is about Oni. There's actually another exhibit about him um, that we'll see. And I guess, right, uh, I'm guessing this is where you walk in. And uh, so here's a statue of Franklin, appropriately, right? And I learned that you can zoom in in here if you wanted to read what uh, some of these things say. It's a little blurry, but um, talking about Franklin, that's pretty cool. So anyways, here we are. First floor, we're going to make our way in. You can already see the beautiful airplanes up here. And um, this, bear with me with this thing because it's a little bit funky. Um, it takes me to the X. And you guys can see the X over here. So I think that's where we're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it took us inside um, to space, which isn't really where I want to go. I want to go right here. Okay. So that's where we were. And um, so this is what it's like when you walk into the museum. And they have these awesome airplanes, like a little postal uh, car here. Um, you immediately see this kind of chariot here, or carriage, let's say, I don't know about chariot. <laughs> but uh, this place is very cool. Um, you get to see right underneath these beautiful airplanes. Aren't these neat? Um, clearly, I would say, airmail related. And look at that guy up there. That is so cool. Man. That is just so cool. Okay, so um, you can't stand everywhere that you would potentially want to stand with this whole uh, virtual tour. But it does give you a pretty good idea of what it's like to be inside. And uh, let's go right, I had it there for a sec, let's go right here, let's start here. So this is Oni again, this little pupper, and uh, he's got all these tags on him and stuff, that looks like a spoon head. So I don't know a whole lot about Oni, but I can say, um, you know, you can easily research any of this stuff. I love this little thing, this is very cool. Clearly they have QR codes that you can scan. And, uh, sorry, I'm, I know this isn't perfect, guys, I just wanted to, uh, sometimes I'm able to get to stand where I want to, and then I can zoom in, let's say if I wanted to kind of read this stuff, he's the mascot of the Railway Mail Service, I never even heard of this dog, they have a map of his travels, this is all very cool, what a cute little guy, and, uh, it seems like they have these little... Uh, devices here that you can uh, pop your face into and kind of scroll through uh, probably some, I'm guessing some images I'm not sure if it's video but I think it's images these neat little pedestals and yeah there's just information littered all throughout this entire museum as uh, would be appropriate I don't know if you oh see I didn't go in here before okay this is cool so we're in a railway car <laughs> Wow, they have a picture of what it was like in the car with all the different um, mail. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. 
Wow, this is cool. This is very cool. All the different mail slots and stuff. Okay, so that took us back out. I'm gonna go back in real quick. Take a look at the other end. Yeah, so there would have been just bags of mail. They have a little monitor with a program. Probably tells you all about it. Yeah, here they are inside of the mail car. Just gonna make the screen big for you guys. This is very cool. I like this. Okay, okay. So that that's very neat. Let's hop outside of the rail car. Okay, I did see this the other day. I think this is super cool. Um, this is one of those ma they call mail on the fly, and the train comes by and they grab the mail bag with a hook or a tool here. Um, that is just so cool to see one of those. And uh, no, I've never actually been to this museum. I'm aware of it, but no, I've never gone there. Uh, whoops, that took me back inside. Whoops, bear with me, guys. Sorry, <laughs> but so I think that's super cool. Um, I love that. So let's walk around. Okay, these are cool. These souvenir penny things. I've done this before when I was a kid. You take a penny, stick it in the machine, crank the handle, and it turns it into a special penny that commemorates that you've been at the National Postal Museum. So what is in here? I'm not sure. Look at that. That looks like an oriental... Uh, mailbox. It's, it's going to let me go right there. Hey, look at all these different mailboxes. Take me. Let's inspect these. Look at these. These are cool. Wow. Okay, let's let's go in here. This is this is inside. Yeah, okay. Moving forward, the service or the challenges facing the postal service in the decades ahead may be more daunting than those of the past. Postal service expanded across the continent and developed technologies to process hundreds of billions of pieces of mail in a year. So this is fairly current. They have a little collage here of all these different. There's an actual gentleman delivering the mail. Mail has a tactile character that is difficult to replace with online equivalents. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. There's a difference between getting a letter and an email. Reading handwriting. Optical character recognition software. You can read the handwritten letters and translate them into code check the address again uh, check it against the database of addresses this is neat engineering is a field where young people can make a difference okay so a few postal people uh okay uh give me Okay, so we just zoom through the wall. What is this? Let's go over here. Let's take a look at what this is. So these must be just pieces of equipment. Feeder mechanism. Oh, wow, cool. So these are like pieces of uh, the machinery. This modern machinery that must be scanning our letters. A feeder mechanism. CSBCS head WABCR camera okay so I'm not going to get into all that this is interesting stuff huh. okay so I do think this is very cool I know it's a little choppy having me uh, click our way through here but this is what the actual tour is like um, just so you guys know there are keyboard shortcuts so you can use your keyboard if you don't want to click the little arrow and stuff. Um, but I will say, every time that I have used 
the uh, keyboard shortcuts. It likes to go all freaky haywire on me. I kind of want to go over there somewhere. There we go. I don't understand sometimes. See, I put the cursor here and it lets me go to that X is the position where I'm going to go. So it's not perfect. Oh, so on the other side was actually how you see that table there. I just wanted to see what was going on here. Huh. <clears throat> okay, so not a whole lot of stuff. Neat little tables with some articles and stuff. They've got pen and notepads for something. Systems at work. United States Postal Service. There's an intricate network. So this is like some basic information about um, the postal system. The official postal system began in the United States in 1792. I actually didn't know that. Jeez, man, uh, that's right. Um, we did, you know, before stamped letters, the whole um, paid postal system where you would pay on delivery before we actually uh, use stamps. The United States Gazette. We have this little postal car. This is. This stuff is very cool. I do want to go here one day. Uh, let's go here. Here we have an old manuscript cancel. That is very cool. I like that desktopper. That's neat. So yeah, I can't read all of the information. But that's okay. Um, you know. Oh wow, look at this. This is neat. Some kind of big panoramic projector screen area where you can sit down that's probably pretty cool to watch like you can see the projector up there um, this is this is pretty cool stuff frontier mail help the nation grow newspapers and letters linked settlers moving west and the families and communities they left behind. Yep. Posted stamps, 1847. This is right, this is what we're talking about. Until 1847, the postmasters calculated the cost of postage. It varied depending on the number of sheets in the letter and its destination. The sender could pay all, part, or none of the postage. With the address he had to make up the difference. In 45, they lowered the postal rates, made them more uniform. Two years later, Congress authorized the first postage stamp. Then the rates dropped again in 1851, down to three cents, where they remained for more than 30 years. President James K. Polk said, A well digested cheap postage is the best means. Excuse me, of diffusing intelligence among the people. <laughs> Didn't really take note of these little little knobby things here. The Overland Mail Company. Okay, so Let's go over here. General delivery. Okay, this is cool. Machines move the mail, 1917. So some post offices were designed as factories and get an elegant facade, facade sorry. behind an ele elegant facade. Conveyor belts of buckets and stuff. Okay. Throwing bins. <laughs> this is 
this stuff is very neat. American soldier writes a postcard home, reassuring his family that he's surviving in France and takes it to the American Expeditionary Force Post Office. A U.S. Post Office worker drives the military mail to the port in France before being placed on board a ship bound for New York City, where it arrives a week later at the New York City Post Office. The postcard is dropped into a pouch from Maryland. This is this is very cool stuff. Look at this equipment. What what is this stuff? This looks like um, okay. Wow, yeah, Pitney Bowes mailing machine. That was ringing a bell with me because I've seen this similar um, when I started um, getting into learning about metered mail. We were seeing these machines. Zip codes, they talk about zip codes. Also kind of zip code challenge, okay. <laughs> I would fail. Yeah, zip codes were a big deal. We all know Mr. Zip, right? Okay, so let me back up a little bit. Barcodes. So we went from zip codes to barcodes. You know? Was as the next step for the machines. Oh well, yeah, okay. Okay, so this is um, a pretty neat little area. Post office must mechanize because if the mail volume continues to grow, it would be impossible to cope with the great flood of mail within a relatively few years. Using present day methods, yeah, we had to, uh, we had to get with the times here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to somehow navigate myself out of this room. This is all kind of the best effort with this thing, I guess. Yeah, okay, I gotta like search around to where I can put my cursor to get me out of here. Okay. <laughs> so this is neat. What is this? It looks like a uh, post office counter. Yeah, right? Look at these mail slots. Old fashioned man. Look at that. Papers and letters. This is neat. Okay, let me have a sip here. Private little private door into the postmaster booth. The bars on the window here is very funny to me. <laughs> kind of a chain link. Hopper on that. Let's back up. Let's see what this says. To our daily talking. Yeah, the post office did seem to be a little bit more of a kind of everyday thing. Are these these must be like old-fashioned safety deposit boxes or I'm not sure but that's very neat okay let's okay, let's hop over here this area oh huh, that's an interesting quote City dwellers in the U.S. enjoyed free home mail delivery long before rural Americans. If you lived in the country, you had to go to the post office. Alright, okay. Often in a country store, 
pick up mail. I go over dirt roads full of potholes, dry weather, muddy swamps after rain, with no guarantee that the mail had arrived. There was no tracking. <laughs> this is true. Uh, so, I'm definitely, I'm definitely enjoying this tour so far. I don't know about you guys. this designing the perfect mailbox look at all these different mailboxes yes by the 1850s we had adhesive postage stamps people no longer had to go to the post office to mail letters keep your stamps at home and then um, mail letters at your leisure yeah Man, look at these old postage boxes. That's neat. Dead letters. Unde undeliverable letters have been forwarded to the dead letter office. They can open undeliverable letters, but the contents are considered private. They were allowed to read only enough of the communication to determine where the letter should go. Wow. Are these real letters? I think they are. Those are so cool. I'd love to have those. <laughs> I'd love to have pretty much all of this stuff. Okay, I want to move forward here. Darn it. Oh, I think it's because I was zoomed in. It was... The... That looks like a really old mail car. Okay, so there's another X. I saw it. Take me to your X. Okay, there we go. Serving the city. Oh, these are cool. Pneumatic tube service. Look, she holds a little baby, puts the the mail. Oh, that must be the pneumatic tube service. Drops it down. This is all very. This is pretty cool stuff. Okay, let's go right here. Yeah, just like at the bank. Free home delivery. It was not available before 1863. Post office had letter carriers, but they weren't paid by the government. They earned their wages by charging recipients one or two cents for each delivered letter. Most people saved their pennies and picked up their own mail. This Mail City collection bag. I bet you can push these little buttons and it probably starts speaking to you. Okay, this is neat. Yeah, look at that. Wagons. Yeah, I was trying to think. I was like, what do you call that? It's a wagon. It carried mail, I think it says mail bags, between railway stations and city post offices. Man, jeez. Things have changed. Okay. So we just walked through all there. We're back here. Now, I did look at this before. They have a, as you can tell, a, uh, a truck here. Let's go over here. And um, actually, let's go right there. I was here the other day. 
And there we were talking about the star route contractors who used vehicles to travel across difficult terrain in all kinds of weather. Look at him, he's just on a donkey or a mule. That's funny. Mail on the mail afloat. The last mule train. Okay, so cool truck. They say don't don't climb on the truck on this little sign that like you can go up these steps and take a look inside. That's cool. Let's go back over here. Okay, well obviously you guys notice this awesome thing here. The Star Route Service. Look at this. Stagecoach. I'll zoom in just in case you guys want to read that. Look at all these different Star Route services. Dog sled. Toboggan. Or is it Toboggan? I can't remember how to say that. So, I was, uh, let's see, where was I? Probably right here the other day. Yeah, I was looking up at Guy. Look at him up there. This chests of mail. This is very cool. White River. Look at this stagecoach. It's so cool. Um, let me go right here. I wanted to share. Look at this um, Indian on the door. That is so cool. There's a lady in there. There's another guy. I didn't notice him before, but I like the Indian. That was very cool. Ornate design on this uh, stagecoach. That is very neat. Okay, so. Um, we need to move forward somehow. Let's go back to the center over here. Take a look at this. I wish, I wish that you could like stand exactly where you want to stand, which would be like right in front of these, you know, but this is as close as I could get. Um, using this virtual tour, but it's still, you know, it's still really cool that you can even go through this place like this. Um, you know, but I, maybe with time as technology advances, uh, see, I can actually read this, but I'd like to stand like right there and look down at the exhibit, at the uh, display there to read it. So some of this, it's not perfect. A <laughs> little FedEx plane. That's cool. I like all the little details and stuff. You can tell that you know the people that made this place have a little passion involved because it's very cool. Um, I like that it looks clean. It looks well done. Um, it's thought out. There's just a plethora of information all over the place. Airmail. Oh, man. Oh, man, my coffee is so good. I got a coffee maker, you guys. Whew. I will take that coffee maker over the French press I've been using any day. So I haven't gone over here yet. I'm wondering if they'll let me. I kind of want to see what's over there. But they're not giving me a single... Oh. There you go. We're getting closer. Take me over here. Mail call. Okay, I haven't even been in there yet. Oh my gosh, there is an awful lot. Oh, oh. I wanted to go. There we go, sweet. So you gotta kind of work at it. But behind the badge. Mobile Command Center. What? A 
Among the grand center to respond to crime, post 9-11 vehicles fully self-contained the power supply, communication equipment, and other emergency gear. Huh. Inspector. Postal inspector. Weird. This big old antenna, I guess. Okay, this is weird stuff. Let's go over here and take a look at these. Oh, wow, that's a postal horn. Don't touch the mailboxes. Okay. Canada. Just really... So these are just foreign mailboxes. I just wish I could stand right in front of them, but it doesn't seem like I'll be able to. But that is very cool. Let's go in here. <laughs> It'll let me. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, we've made it through the door. Inspectors in the news. Most of the postal inspection service work takes place outside of the spotlight, but it has its share of high-profile investigations. Sensational cases bring the inspection service to the forefront. Uh, okay, so we're gonna hop over to the other side of that. Explosive delivery bombs in the mail are very rare, can be deadly. Ted Kaczynski, uh, the inspection service uh, has a real purpose. Wow, look at the sketch and whatnot. Is that what the package looked like? That'd be crazy if that was the package. Suspicious packages. Uh, sorry, wrong button. Illicit cargo. Illegal drug trafficking, that's right. That's another side of all that. Whoa. Anthrax, that must be the anthrax thing. In a time of terror. Oh boy, anthrax, I forgot about that. Look at that. Wow, this is neat. So this this whole exhibit here is about the... Uh, I want to stand right there. But um, this is all about the inspection service. <laughs> I have that same vacuum at work. This is neat. Okay. I don't know why. I, I never even thought um, that there would be a thing about the inspection service. That's something, you know, to be honest, that I really haven't given a lot of thought to, but... It's definitely a aspect of the postal service. Wow, they, they helped crack a billion dollar art forgery ring. Inspectors investigate hundreds of claims of investment fraud. This is cool. I would like to go here one day. That would be neat. So what is this? Trouble on the train, highway robbery. Jack in the box. Look at all this stuff. There was a suspicious fire in Virginia where the post office was burned to the ground. 
and the investigations showed the fire was meant to destroy evidence. In 97, three men used a hammer to open the safe and steal stamps, money orders, and money order print and printing machine. They used the machine to forge more than 60 money orders, totaling 40k, and cash them in and around Washington, D.C. Inspectors broke the case when a check cashing outlet reported a suspicious postal money order with its receipt still attached. The criminals were quickly arrested and jailed. Man, this stuff is so cool. Look at that Tommy gun. Oh, man. Get out of here. They got a Tommy gun on display? <laughs> Obviously fake gold bars. Look at this looks like a all kinds of valuable all kinds of valuable this is neat fake money forgeries okay um, this is very cool this is all um, stuff I have not and this is a big place oh that's neat I got a vault door look at that yeah, this is stuff I haven't looked at. I, I really only spent a couple of minutes uh, kind of browsing through here the other morning before going to work because I just wanted, I figured, I found out, I woke up early and I found out about this tour. And then uh, I just wanted to like kind of breeze through real quick and I lo only looked at some exhibits. <laughs> what is this? Franklin appointed the first postal surveyor, which was a precursor to today's inspectors. Postal inspectors make arrests and serve federal warrants and subpoenas. They collaborate with law enforcement. This is funny. So what is this? Identifying suspects. Inspectors piece together clues and inf bits of information to identify a suspect. Symbols of service, that's neat. Little badges. Gathering clues. Analyzing evidence. Checking fingerprints, markings, fibers. Well, This is cool stuff. Okay, so what is this? Male related crime. Identity theft, that's a big one. Child exploitation through the mail. Drug trafficking. Man. Wow, each year inspectors arrest 3,000 people for mail theft. Arrest 300 people for assaults and threats to them. Postal employees investigate robberies and burglaries. Arrest 1,500 people for mail fraud. 2,500 for drug trafficking, money money laundering. Is this real? Work at home stuffing envelopes two thousand dollars a week. That's gotta be fake, right? Any number that's five 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 is like a Oh oh right, yeah, this is, this has to be fake, right? This is all about fraud and stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I can make two thousand dollars a week stuffing envelopes at home. <laughs> they actually had me going for a sec. That is funny. That has to be fake. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Like, jeez, I should quit my job. What the hell am I doing? Breaking my back. Make more money? All right. <laughs> okay, so this is a neat little exhibit. I'm trying to figure out how to get out of here. Well, that takes me all the way out of the room. Whoa. Okay, so 
I saw the entrance to this out there. It was like the ABCs or something. Consider the postage stamp. Its usefulness consists in the ability to stick to one thing till it gets there. The collecting of stamps brings untold millions of people of all nations into greater understanding of their world neighbors. So this is so this must be some kind of ABCs of stamp collecting here. Let's go right here. A is for advertising covers. B is for bisect. This is cool. I already like this. C for Cinderella. D for duck. E for error stamps. Ah, oh, this is very cool. F is for what? I'm hoping they can let me. Ah, I wish they. Oh, okay. Well, that will take me pretty close. What is F for? Firsts. Oh, like first day covers. That makes sense. The world's first. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, just firsts. The first stamp is Penny Black. G is for G stamp, like a G rate. Yeah, you can see them right there. This is so cool, and they have they have examples. There's a little like probably a block of four G rates. H is for hand stamp. Any postal marking stamped by hand, whether as a cancellation, routing mark, or other processing notice, such as return to sender and postage due. You know, this is true. People love the hand stamps. Oh, neat. Look at a fancy canceller. The court cancels. That is so cool. That's actually the first that I've ever seen one. I knew they were cork, but I mean that is so cool to see that. Oh, look at the fancy cans! Look at the Maltese cross. These kind of pinwheels. That looks like a star cancel. There's another star cancel. That looks like a penny red over there on the top left. This is very neat. I is for inverts. Yeah, like the inverted Jenny, of course. J is for joint issue. Okay, I mean, this is... I don't know why I didn't think that... I, I saw this ABC section at a glance and thought, okay, ABCs, whatever. This is actually very cool. K is for Kansas City Roulette. Okay, I want to go through this. This actually has piqued my interest. L is for local post. Rattlesnake Island. That is so funny. Um... I think I actually have that book. I think I have that book, you guys. Um, I would have to look around, but I swear to God, I actually have that. That's so funny. It's at the Smithsonian Museum. M is for mole readies? I don't even know what that is. Elaborately decorated prepaid leather sheets and envelopes issued in Great Britain in 1840 at the same time as that country's first purchase stamps, noted artist William Mulready won the design competition for the Postal Stationery, but his fanciful artwork found no favor with the public. The Mulready's were quickly withdrawn from sale. <coughs> <coughs> I had never heard of that. And it's for numerals. Yeah, okay. Most stamps have numerals. Yeah. Oh, it's for overprint. Like that. That's funny. That's so cool. They have all these different stamps on display. P is for Persian rug. The nickname given to the high values in a series of documentary revenue stamps issued in 1871. Their large size, intri intricate, colorful designs are more like those of currency than of stamps even for the time of their issue I have seen these in my back of book um, album and uh, the Persian rug is I think a very appropriate kind of nickname let's go okay they got just some sheets on display here 
Satanic uh, sheets. That's cool. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I won't go through the whole freaking alphabet, but. Or at least I won't read every single one. Cures for quality. R is. It's got to be railway or something. I can't quite read. Railway, it does say that. Yep. S is for Satanant. Satanant. Sorry, I'm pretty sure my em emphasis on the Tanant is incorrect. T is for topical. I missed that one. W is war issues. X is for X cancel. Uh, oh, wow. Those are those are super familiar. Those are like those war tax stamps or something. Y is for Yvert and Teller. Z is Zeppelin. Uh, that's cool. I got some Zeppelin mail. Okay, um, so I actually really like that exhibit. That is very cool. Okay, <clears throat> let's hop out of here. Gonna go back to the center of the room. Let's go in here. Mail call. To men with a writing icy cold. Yeah, mail was a big thing for the military. Heartfelt letters, yep. Yeah. Mail call, it makes sense. I, I don't know why I didn't put that together immediately. Mail call, that is a military kind of jargon right there. Okay, I want to get that X, there we go. What do we have here? Even with the increased access to telephone and internet service, mail remains a vital link to home. During the Persian Gulf War, mail volume grew from 2,000 to 600,000 pounds per day, arriving in Saudi Arabia. There are innovations like Moto Mail, introduced by the Marine Corps in 2004, which combined online and postal systems with messages from family and friends transmitted securely via the internet to be printed and delivered by mail to deploy personnel. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with this stuff. Was that a coconut? What? And it's got a tag on it with stamps? Get out of here. What? They mailed a coconut. <laughs> this is cool. Okay, so, um, scoot over to the other side here. Revolutionary story must be talking about way back. Changing with the times. Alright, so that has my curiosity. That must be some kind of canceller. It, it looks like it's really hard to read. This looks like it says Italian hand stamp. That's very cool. It's very cool. Okay, so this whole section is about military mail. That's cool, look at this. Boy, that looks like a neato letter. I wonder what's going on there. Look at the seal on that thing. Different hand stamps and stuff. This is all super cool. 
cool. That definitely looks like a military mailbag. From horseback to helicopter. What's that? Military Postal Express Service hand stamp. Man. Jeez. What's this letter here? Mm, can't quite read it. Oh, it says, this is the fourth letter at Elma. I'd be glad if you received. Okay, well. Okay, so members of the armed service use the postal system to vote, pay taxes, ex exchange official correspondence, and send and receive personal letters. USPS works with the Department of Defense to provide the same services American residents enjoy to military personnel. Yeah. Okay, this is cool. That's a neat little um, section there. Whoopsie. So I'm trying to get back outside of this room. Oh. Okay, so this would pop me out the outside. Whoa. Right into another exhibit. Airmail. What did I say? The National Postal Museum gratefully acknowledges the generosity of FedEx and the continued support and commitment of the United States Postal Service. <coughs> so some posters here talking about airmail. By 75, airmail had become fundamental in the USPS. Okay. Look at that. That is so cool. Suicide Club. Pilots hired by the post office department began flying the mail on August 12, 1918. These men were a fascinating mix of native-born Americans, immigrants, former military pilots, and civilian instructors. Airmail pilots were expected to fly in the face of challenges that others could refuse in order to maintain the schedule even in bad weather. With such odds against them, it's remarkable that more pilots did not die in the service. Of over 200 pilots hired between 1918 and 26, 34 died flying the mail. The service gained an ominous nickname among aviators as a suicide club for flyers. Oh my god, look at that. That's so cool. Look at this stuff. Man, that is so cool. That is so cool. I want to read that book. I want to read that little journal. So I'm going to go to the X. Okay, so we just hopped outside of there. Yeah, I saw this the other day. I don't really know what this is. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh. Forced landing. Wind direction, weather. Well, I'm not going to sit here while you guys make you guys wait for me to actually understand okay so I had noticed this the other day and I didn't come in here but this is neat man <laughs> oh. like some kind of nature exhibit If I can read what it says, one of the nope, can't read that. I was kind of hoping that they'd let me go around in here searching for an X. Uh, I want to walk through there. This is neat though, I like this. Way back before we industrialized so much, this is kind of the route, I guess. You know, what I'm guessing is a kind of a portrayal of what it was really like. Uh, which, you know, it's just nature, but uh, this is 
way back kind of what your postal man would be trekking through perhaps <laughs> well, I was really hoping that they'd let me I'm hoping to see an X oh I saw an X oh, there we go okay okay cool so here's the other side Um, maybe it says the the riders, maybe? 200 and some mile journey between something and New York became known as the King's something highway. Huh. Oh. This is cool. I like the little icicle. Neat little nature exhibit here. This is cool. Colonial America, excuse me, mail was often brought to local taverns and something in thick doubled as post offices. Local residents would gather to socialize and collect their mail if there was any. Sorry, that's really hard to read. I'm amazed I could even read that at all. So people used to join in ta uh, taverns. Okay, so let's walk out of here. Kind of the backwards view. Okay, what's in here? The colonial posts. Tis ridiculous to see His Majesty's courier metamorphosed to a snail paced carrier. Post Office of Philadelphia is known, is now kept at Ben Franklin's in Market Street. Yeah, I love the quotes in this place. I haven't heard any of these. This is about Colonial Post. Well, can't quite read it all. Oops, that was the wrong button. Manning the posts, a woman's job, creating an independent post, finding the nation. Oh boy, what's in the mail pouch? <laughs> okay, so the post, it says. So this is a neat little, little area. Now what's out here? The post and the press. Okay, a bunch of newspapers, jeez. Keep hoping I'll find like an X right there where I can just stand there and look at it all, but as I scan across, I don't see an X popping up. Oh well. So a neat little section. Freedom of speech in the mail. The expanding nation. Oh, take me back. There we go. In the early 1800s, the United States seemed a land of boundless promise and possibility. People thought we had manifest destiny to rule from sea to sea. Settlers poured in here from Europe and Asia, driving American Indians from their ancestral homes in the land rush. Yep. The territory alone was of little value unless the lands could be developed. Stagecoach companies holding mail contracts help secure those areas, turning rough trails into well-traveled roads. Huh. Man. Our claim is to claim by the right of our manifest destiny to overspread and possess the whole of the continent, which Providence has given for the development of the great experiment of liberty. I guess this is uh, showing our expansion across. This is cool. I love this picture. That is super duper neat. Look at that. Look at those wagons. Wow. This is, this is cool. 
Okay, so what's over here? Inland waterways, early early rail routes. Wow, look at this old steamship. I think that's a steamship. A oh, steamboat, yeah. Aside from the steamboat collisions, <coughs> which are more frequent than the explosions of their boilers, this would be the most agreeable way to travel in America. Man, things have changed so much. And you know, it's only been a couple of hundred years. Less than that, you know? Man, the human race just advances at a rapid pace. I beg of you all, do not fail to write often to us as we trust each steamer will bring from each of you packages more precious than gold dust. Creating postal routes around Cape Horn across Central America. Look at these little ships. This is so cool. Man, okay, I like that. That is cool. Boy, it just keeps going and going, doesn't it? This is a big museum. Post haste. Huh. Some sort of display there. Moving west. Ocean routes. Opened up the west coast. Oh, just a whole bunch of history. Look at the little stagecoach. That's neat. Ugh. Look at all this stuff. The Homestead Act. Passed during the Civil War. Granted 160 acres of land to anyone who agreed to improve the land and live on it for five years. Man, 160 acres. Gosh. Thousands headed west along the overland trails to claim this after the war to claim land. God dang. Whew. You know how happy I'd be to own an acre today? Things are so different in America. Okay, this is neat. Securing the frontier it was this section. Okay. Look at this guy. Man. This thing definitely doesn't have uh, ABS or air suspension. <laughs> the Pony Express. Oh, cool. Hardships. <coughs> new immigrants were not only separate from their families and friends in their new homes, but neighbors as well. For houses were often built miles apart. Letters and social events helped relieve the sense of isolation. But other hardships of homesteading were not so easily overcome. Yeah, you know, you, I can, <clears throat> after looking at some of these, so this is the Pony Express, um, it's kind of helping me appreciate their point of you know, when we were forming this country and spreading across the land, um, just how isolated people were from each other. And uh, I can understand how the mail service absolutely played in a key and vital role in connecting people, in sharing information, uh, communication. I mean, you know, before computers and the internet and wireless everything, we had mail, and um, that was how you communicated with other people. There wasn't, you know, then we got the telephone and all that other stuff too, but um, mail was an absolutely huge part of this country, not to mention other countries, I'm sure, too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just very... 
You know, I think uh, people take for granted probably today just how important um, the Postal Service used to be. It's still important today, but back in these times, it was different. Pony Express. Of course, the guy's riding ponies, right? Get you your mail. Look at that. That's cool. Sorry if you guys can hear my stomach like squealing and growling. I haven't had breakfast, but I gave it some coffee is all it's getting for now until I'm done with this tour. <laughs> okay, so that was very cool. Um, so let's head back out of here. Actually, I think I'll just click one again. Oh, no. You know what I can do? I can go back. Um, you can, of course, click any of these at any time. Well, that one took us to those boxes. That's cool. Ah, oh, this was a cool place. Um, the William H. Gross Stamp Gallery. Every stamp tells a story. Come discover the amazing stories that unfold from world-renowned collectors here at the National Postal Museum. Here they're talking about the Penny Black in 1840, the first U.S. stamps. This is a nice little room. I like this room. I like the different... That's a, that's a common stamp. I have that guy. Oh, I have these ones for sure. That one. Um, these are cool. I like how they did this. I love that stamp too. The Capitol Dome. Right, and they've got these awesome plaques up here. All of these different stamps. It's very cool. BG. Project Mercury. T-Rex. So some, some monitors showing some different stuff. Talking about this, the stories that uh, stamps tell. Struggle for justice, breast cancer. So I never noticed that, but after touring this museum, Oni being that, that famous dog, uh, maybe I'll be able to pick him out on this stamp from now on and be like, oh yeah, it's Oni, the mascot. I still have to read about him. I still don't really know much. I just know from what we saw, right, that he's a mascot dog. Westward expansion. I like this room. This is cool. <coughs> oh, I'm ch choking on my own spit here. Um, so this is very cool. I saw this the other day. Okay, these are gems. This is their gems section, uh, which uh, I definitely wanted to show you guys. Like gems of the mineral world, these stamps and pieces of mail are rare and highly valued. Uh, so anyways, um, let's see. Well, I'm going to be able to stand exactly where I want, but 1765 to 76 revolutionary milestones. American Colonist Revolt, right? They were talking about the Stamp Act. Yep, I read this the other day. Um, the first, what did they say? The Sorry, I got lost. The first incremental step on the road to the American Revolution. Cries of taxation without representation. The tax on stamp agents led to the repeal of the act. Then the Revolutionary War began. 1775. In 1776, we adopted the Declaration of Independence. On that same day, lawyer William Bant sent this letter to the first signer, John Hancock. How oh, crazy. They've got the freaking letter. Oh, man. That is so cool. Okay. These are... Oh, wait, wait. These are essays... For America's first two postage stamps, the cover is the earliest known of a U.S. stamp. Must be, must be this exhibit here. Yeah. Wow, so these are essays. And it said that the cover is the earliest known of a U.S. postage stamp. Wow, that's the, that is the earliest known cover using a postage stamp in in the US oh my god I didn't realize that that is so cool oh, 
Wow, the earliest known cover right there. Holy crap. Franklin and Washington. This is cool. What's this? The, uh, this upside down blue pane within a red frame is the most famous U.S. stamp and one of the world's most famous printing errors. Only one misprinted sheet of 100 stamps was sold. You're telling me that they, I didn't know that, they have a block of inverted Jennies at the Smithsonian? Wow. They've actually got a block with the selvage here. That's nuts. Talk about rare, huh? Man, they got a block of inverted Jennies next to the oldest, earliest U.S. known U.S. cover. That's right next to a letter signed by John Hancock. Man. Talk about some history here. Wow, they have Hawaiian missionary stamps. Oh my God. And a cover. Jeez. Postage stamps from Paradise. I wish I could stand right there, but wow. Hawaiian missionary stamps. Pony Express Mail. We can actually get a good look at that. Must be that guy right there. That that hand stamp. Pony Express writer carried this cover considered one of the most historically significant in U.S. postal history. Notice the notation on the front. Recovered from a mail stolen by Indians. That is nuts. I wonder if that's what that says, recovered by from a mail stolen by Indians. Maybe it's that. I don't know. But uh, holy crap. Wow, talk about historic. It was carried by a Pony Express rider, and it was recovered from mail that was stolen by Indians. Talk about stuff that you'll never, ever come across these days. Holy crap. That is so cool. Man. Talk about a philatelic find, huh? Postmark in space. So this astronaut postmarked this um, in space. Okay, moon mail. That's cool. Okay, so that, I mean, yeah, I would call those gems appropriately. That's freaking unbelievable. Holy crap. Man, they've got a lot of neat stuff in here. Mail marks history. This is, I know this is becoming now, oh, look at that, a long video, but whatever. I don't mind. If you guys are watching this to this point, you obviously enjoy this kind of stuff. I do. This is very neat. America's most famous stamp error, 1918. Though they're talking about producing the inverted Jenny, so this must be, yeah, okay. I actually uh, saw this the other day, uh, Spider Press, that's what they call that. Very neat, and they have pictures of people using it. Um, yeah, okay, I was like, <clears throat> look at these old guys. We're not old guys, but these people from way back using the spider press to print sheets of stamps. This is so freaking cool. Yeah, I love this section with all these different postage stamps up on the along the walls and ceiling. Look at that. How cool would it be to have this in your room? Very neat. So this is where we were, yeah. So we, we kind of already saw this, but yeah, I love this section. That's very cool. Um, with the stamps on the ceiling and stuff. Love the spider press. Um, devices to mark rates and routes. Oh, I'd love to get a little closer to that. Darn it. There's no X right in front of it, but oh well. See the different machinery here, whatever was going on, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, man, the history of... Uh, you know, just postal history in general is just so deep. 
No wonder I don't know it all. It's okay that I don't know it all. There's so much to know. Delivering mail in cities. Bridging distances over land. Look at these different artifacts. What is this? Sea post clerk's chest badge. And railway mail service clerk's chest badge. Wow, those are cool. Royal train. RPO cancellation. Die hub. 1939. Great Britain's King George and Elizabeth made a goodwill tour of Canada and the United States. This die hub cancelled this die hub cancelled souvenir mail on board their train. Wow. C plus clerk John's maybe Stacy March's pocket watch. <laughs> C plus clerk Oscar S. Maybe Woody's set of keys from 1912. Oh my god. This stuff is crazy. Look at it. A letter mailed aboard the, the Titanic. You have to lift to see. They must be trying to keep the uh, light off of these artifacts. Um, wow. They have a letter that was mailed aboard the Titanic. They have a Silk Road letter. From 1390? 1390? That is crazy. Land and sea. Okay, well, let me keep going. I, I don't want to spend too much time. I want, I want to kind of move around so you guys can see more stuff. Okay, so this is... Did I just jump, like, all the way across the room? I did... Sorry, guys. Okay, let's go there, then. That's where we'll have to go. Connect with U.S. Stamps. What's in your attic? <laughs> Save your family history by preserving letters and envelopes and other documents that provide a window into the past. These personal documents are resources for future generations. This is very true. This is why I try to save some of my family covers. You know, <clears throat> maybe one day... Um, my grandchildren or their grandchildren will read some of the letters that I've saved from me and my grandma and um, my family. Okay, so we saw that. And uh, find it interesting, you know. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. <coughs> so... We're talking about since, uh, since Penny Black... Stamps have changed. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Modern stamps reflect the nation's cultural diversity. Discover how modern stamps are designed, produced, and stuff. Okay. So that must be this section. Wow, they got even more stamps on these awesome little displays up on the ceiling. That is so cool. I love this virtual tour. By the way, uh, I would also recommend, you know, this, if somebody has a big, giant monitor like I have, I have this big, giant, ridiculous 55-inch computer monitor, and um, it makes this very immersive. Look at, you see the guy up there. <laughs> Look at these different mailboxes. I like this big tall one. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I like this big tall one. And um, you can see the ER symbol on there. Wow, that is that must be really old. Holy crap. Post office letterbox. It looks like a birdhouse. You know, <clears throat> one thing I hate is that we got rid of our blue drop boxes where I live. I hate that. All growing up, uh, I went through the wall. All growing up, um, you know, I used to be able to go and drop mail on the blue boxes. And I can't anymore. That sucks. Okay, it keeps taking me through the wall there, which isn't what I'm trying to do. I kind of wanted to walk in here, but let's just take a look. Treasures of the World. International Treasures. Let's try this X. I'm hoping it won't take me through. Oh, good. Discover famous and extraordinary stamps from around the world. Wow, Cape of Good Hope, those are rare. I actually almost bought um, some of those from um, 
at philbaumink.com. Um, they had a little collection that was a high value collection. It was a few thousand dollars, but uh, they had some of those triangular Cape of Good Hope, actually several of them in it. I almost bought that anyway. Uh, those are very cool. What makes these objects treasures? They tell incredible stories and connect with the important events in world history. Some are very scarce or have errors. Made during production, a few represent firsts in the history of philately. Wow, so they have a bunch of philatelic treasures from diff 24 different countries. Oh man, I wish, um, yeah, if I was there I would definitely take a look at each one of these. Treasures of the world. She like, look at this, what does it say? Jenny over the Great Wall in China. Issued in 1921, this was China's first airmail stamp service from Peking to Shanghai. It shows a Curtis Jenny airplane flying over the Great Wall of China. I swear I've seen that. I might have that. On the tail is a symbol of Sun Yat-sen's Republic of China, yeah. Huh. So anyways, um, not that each one of these are complete gems like those, um, you know, that other section, um, these are still awesome stamps, and they're just saying they're kind of treasures, um, explaining different uh, history from different uh, places all around. That's a cool little section. I would definitely check every single one of those out if I could. Okay, hopefully this won't take me through. Uh, it took me through. Darn it. Okay, let's go back. I completely lost my freaking place, you guys. Oh, boy. Okay, so that's where we were. <laughs> no, it took me through again. <laughs> ah, okay, I'm a little bit disoriented now. Let's try that one. Okay, so... Okay, so that this little area here just seems to be a little funky, but... Um, bummer. Yeah, I wish it wouldn't take me through the wall. Okay, I'm done messing around. Sorry. Um, so that's a cool section. I would love to get a little bit closer look at this globe. I want to see what's over in there, but whatever. Um, it keeps messing around with me. So, okay. So anyways, let's see if we can go over here somewhere. Let's see what's in here. The National Stamp Salon. See, in here they were talking about production, right? Design, all that stuff. They have a little thing, create your own stamp. Okay, that's cool. That's neat. I like that. Little thing with some postage stamps. for the Mainly for the kids, I think. Let's go to the salon. What is this place? What can you find in the frames? Yeah, it's the rarest U.S. stamp, you know, the Z-Grill. Postmaster General's Collection. Wow, so you can pull these out and look at them. Is this the actual Postmaster General's Collection? I mean, I guess so. Benjamin, Benjamin K. Miller Collection. Wow, so in this salon... They've got just awesome stuff to look at. Artwork, die proof, production, ex exhibition, exhibited panels. The Benjamin K. Miller Collection is a loan from the New York Public Library. Huh. Excuse me. Special, oh wow. Oh man. Okay, this is super killer. Very nice. Man, they put a lot of work into this place. Um, I would love to view these collections just to take a good look at them. Revenue specialized. You know that there's some really cool stuff in here. <laughs> uh, the National Philatelic Collection. Looks like a rolling pin. Stamps that helped win the Civil War. Congress initiated the use of revenue stamps to pay tax on certain items to help win the Civil War. I'm not going to lie, I didn't even realize that revenue stamps played a role uh, in the Civil War. I just thought they were just like basically 
for the government to make money, but for what purpose, you know, to what end? I just haven't learned enough to know. The Smithsonian's first philatelic object was a pane of the 10 cent Lou Jefferson Davis stamp released by Confederates, the Confederate States of America in 1863. Since the National Philatelic Collection was established in 1886, hundreds of individuals have donated their collections. The Post Office Department, U.S. Postal Service, Department of the Treasury, Library of Congress, and other federal institutions have also transferred collections. Look at these different things here. They're super cool. Uh, I wish I was there to get a good look at them. New acquisitions. So these are all just contributions. Some kind of a more metal or something. And look at that big coin. Bet you these things are very, very valuable. Those look like old, uh, maybe court cancels or something. So we can actually stand right there. Let's we'll say postal stationery dies. Okay. So you're kind of struggling to read what that says. Yeah, cancellation devices. Oh, so that was a Medal of Honor. David H. McNerney and Medal of Honor. Wow, Medal of Honor. Penny Post, local post mailboxes. Man, this stuff is cool. <coughs> Please send this letterbox to the post office, Honolulu. Honolulu tin can mailbox. Wow. Clarence Henry Eagle album. Wow. This stuff is just unbelievable. So what are the stuff? So this is the national stamp collection over here. Look at Farley's Follies. Wow. Look at that. The whole sheet. 33 to 40 New Deal with all this writing on the side. Wow, man. They're numbered. This stuff is really cool. National Stamp Collection. Wow. What a very cool uh, section here. I'm, uh, I wanted to kind of read that one they had open, but oh well. There's Lincoln on there. This is very cool. This is very cool. They've obviously got some nice little treasures in these kind of boxes over here you can open up and look at. Definitely neat. Um, okay, let's make our way out of here. That was super duper cool. I definitely like that. What's over here? So this must be like the main entrance hall. Look at information, stamp gallery. What a beautiful place. Jeez, look at the look at the ceiling and the kind of the columns. The structure is very beautiful. This is a beautiful place. Man, nice place. Jeez. Postmaster's Gallery, China and U.S. Mail. My curiosity is killing me. I wonder what this X takes me to. Is this where we were? No. Haven't been in here yet. Man, this place is huge. L Lunar New Year stamps. Man, I like this place a lot. It's very beautiful. Love the wood in this room. Absolutely stunning. Very beautiful room. So a bunch of different covers here. Huh. Yeah. I'll tell you what, guys. 
Oh wow, you can see the guy with his, uh, in the mirror, the guy who's doing this whole... This has a name. Um, believe it or not, my father has one of these machines where you can like scan a whole house so people can do a virtual tour. Um, it's something with an M. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but there's a there's a word for doing these three D scans to allow these virtual tours. No China and U.S. Very cool. Um, hmm. Stomach is growling. Okay. So, um, that was cool. Chinese in America. Okay. Wow, there's more. Pacific Exchange. China and U.S. Mail. The Qing Dynasty. Yeah, so, I mean, if any of you guys ever end up in uh, D.C. And, uh... You know, if you're a philatelist or you're interested in postal history or you just want to go to a nice place and learn some neat stuff and kill an afternoon, um, this is the right place to go. Another place that interests me, whoopsie, is uh, the Natural History Museum. Republic of China. So a whole bunch of history. Oh, look at the hats. That's cool. Oh, there's no X. Okay. Let's go into this other room. I think I just decided what I'll do for this video is I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to just do this first floor and then uh, maybe I can do another video where I do the second floor and we take a look in there. The collecting of stamps brings untold millions of people from all nations into greater understanding of their world neighbors. <clears throat> Let's see if we can take a look at what this is. <laughs> look at all the tools. Tongs. I, got, I have the same exact UV light. That's funny. All these different... Um, pin, what do you call those? Pins? Or what, what, what are they? They look like pins. Okay, it doesn't say anything there. Oh, yeah, it's okay. Stamp collecting tools. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah. Oh, wow, I have that sheet. My grandma bought me that lighthouse sheet. That's in my album. <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. I also have this uh, inverted, this kind of recent release inverted Jenny uh, souvenir sheet. It's funny, I actually got some of this stuff. Any other good quotes? Let me back up here. I have explored the world, its countries and continents, through my love of stamps. This one says, Stamp collecting is a hobby for busy, purposeful, ambitious people, because, in pattern, it has the essential elements of a career, but transposed in a clearly... Oh, boy, let's go back. I can't read it. <laughs> in a clearly delimited intensely private world to a clearly de I have to look up what delimited is I've never heard that word by some Ain Ann I'm not sure how to say that okay this is uh, this is cool look at that what is that <coughs> different designs. Oh wow, I just got that stamp. I love that stamp. That's funny. The little X is holographic. What is this? It almost looks like a, a some kind of plate here. I guess a, maybe a piece of a press plate or I'm not sure. I owe my life to my hobbies, especially stamp collecting. <laughs> FDR. I do a lot of running and hiking, and I also collect stamps. Space stamps and Olympic stamps. Sally Ride. I'm assuming that's her. I don't know much about her. Stamp production. Yeah, okay, that must be related here. 
And they have each roll is more than two miles long and weighs over a thousand pounds. So we still use engraving today, but sparingly because of the high cost. Other methods include photogravure, which engraves photograver, maybe that's how you say it, which engraves a metal plate using chemicals and light rather than tools. Offset lithography uses flexible rubber or aluminum plates, <coughs> which are not engraved. These processes are easier and less expensive, and they produce more colorful images. Yeah, stamps will continue to evolve, evolve the technology. Take me. Okay, this is where we were. Okay, I see. So we kind of wrapped around. Um, okay, I have like a visual, I have a, or let's say a mental image now. So this all wraps around the main hallways out here, and it wraps around this Chinese section. Comes through the production of stamps. And then over here was the, uh, the whole salon with the library. So let's go back out to the main hall. I guess you can't really go down there. Took me back inside. Oh, cool shops, exhibits. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If I ended up here, knowing me, I'd probably be a bad, bad boy and blow some money. Yeah, this must be the entrance to it all. Beautiful place. So... I think that we're done with this first level, and um, yeah, we went to the stamp gallery. Uh, this is very cool. You know what they're missing? A hot dog stand, but <laughs> uh, this is um, this has been very cool. I love the gems. This section here is probably my my favorite uh, couple of pieces of philatelic history. The gems are just nuts. Um, that is some crazy cool stuff. So yeah, I guess you can kind of start here and begin, you know, the world's first postage stamps. This might be the, where most people begin the tour here. And, um... So anyways, guys, um, there is an entire second floor. And uh, maybe I'll breeze through here just to see if there's anything that I happen to have missed. Only... Looks like we saw all of this stuff. Yeah, we saw all of this. So, yeah, an awful lot going on on the first floor of this museum. And um, I think this is a very, very nice place. You know, when I was a kid, I used to get dragged to museums and I hated it. Oh, boy, did I hate it. I thought it was the most boring thing ever. Um, but, you know, here's what happens. We all grow up systems at work oh we were in there nice escalator up to the second floor look at the ceiling lined with what, what was that um pan oh god pan pacific pan american exposition or something <laughs> i have that stamp um so yeah this is anyways um <clears throat> i'd love to go into museum shop this has been very cool so this was the first floor, and then there is a second floor that uh, I have no idea what's going on here. Maybe I'll have to do a little uh, view through. Um, it, actually, maybe you know, maybe there's nothing here, and it's not even um, worth making a video. What do I know? We're on the second floor here. What the heck? It says we're on the second floor. See the third floor. Maybe we'll just make we'll finish this video off here. Sorry guys to kind of jump around. We got the view from above. All this different stuff. And um so this burn education loft. Is there any way? No. This gets into probably private areas. Yeah, the whole second floor. I thought that there was a second floor. Anyways, I think that maybe that was it. Well, <clears throat> nonetheless, this has been... Um, maybe I will just make this one video. This has been pretty pretty neat. And 
I hope you guys enjoyed walking through this museum. Very, very cool. They have some super killer stuff in here. I think it's a very well done place. It seems nice and clean and vibrant. And um, man, have they got some really awesome, valuable, historic stuff in this museum. I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm sorry I was mistaken about the whole second floor thing. I guess not. Um, weird that they have a first, second, and third. But... Yeah, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot going on. I don't know what they're talking about second floor here, but... I mean, this is the second floor, but there's really nothing to do. <laughs> Weird. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tour, and, um... I thoroughly did myself. Um, I think it's brilliant that they did this virtual scan of this place. It's very cool to be able to, from the comfort of my own home, uh, look through this place. And um, one day I would like to go there and just take a uh, up close look at a few of these things without a doubt. Well, that was it for this video. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.